I just love stuff like this. Something that's like one degree, two degrees outside the mainstream. Something that's got a little story, a little character, uh, a little uniqueness. This is the Ross and Rad Zero um, from Alex Rawson's Venture Post uh, Odyssey. Um, these things are super cool. Each one its own beautiful design. I'm trying to get you a little detail here. Uh, I like this one a lot. It's fun just to poke around on their gallery. They've got some some really, really fun ones. Uh, you know, big open back planar. Um, definitely some shared DNA with, uh, with my experience with Odysseys for sure. Um, some, some unique traits. The, uh, the headband is, is an interesting design. Um, just got this sort of like pressured bar here thing. It works really nicely. Um, leather appointed and then this sort of like memory foam headband these things are heavy this whatever this resin is that they're they're pouring for the cups is not light um there's a bunch of metal here this is that's that's metal um so these things are, are beefy when you pick them up no doubt about it but not uncomfortable honestly like i don't know if it's just that i i often get sort of hot spots with headphones but these are fine um and something about the clamp and combined with the squishiness of this guy really doesn't bother me i can wear them for extended periods but man when you pick them up you do go <laughs> oh um you know and you feel them when you put them on you're definitely like oh yeah there's weight on my neck i feel it but honestly really didn't bother me that all that, that much um they have my favorite um i don't it's really hard to see but uh 3.5 millimeter connectors i was a little worried that this little um tight circle in the resin that they cut out for the connector would make it so that certain aftermarket cables wouldn't work but i didn't run into that i had a handful of cables that i tried it with and everything worked fine but something to be cognizant of maybe um but but yeah so that's you know that's oh and these super 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 deep very lush cushy pushy ear pads um which again sort of remind me of my past odyssey listening experiences uh overall sound um that's just a super enjoyable listen it is very full sounding very lush but there is plenty of detail to be had um and that is not always uh, a commonly achieved feat to have something that feels really rich and analog and sort of sweet um but also does present some nice little sparkle and crispness uh when when called upon at the right moments i guess it's sort of like an analog sound is what that, that kept, word kept coming to my head where i didn't feel like i was listening to the technology i was just listening to the music and this will sound kind of dumb but the other thing that came into my head was like, oh, they sound like headphones. <laughs> Just like, yeah, well, they're headphones. But I, I mean that in like, I remember, I don't know if it was like a pair of Bose or something. Like back in the day, like first kind of good pair of headphones I ever heard, like on a road trip, sitting in the back of a car, just listening to music, just being fully in the music um, in that special way that like good headphones can do for you um, that's different than speakers and aren't trying to be like speakers um, and to that end I think these uh, these don't really have that sort of like scale uh, of of space or sound stage um, that 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 some other uh, big open back planars do so if you're like looking for that really airy sort of um, spread out great like staging sort of thing I, I don't know if this is going to satisfy you um, also I feel like these don't quite have the decay of some other really, uh, some other planars at their price point where notes kind of end, you know, they don't just sort of go off into the forever void. Um, in terms of highs, you know, the, the, the treble is very detailed. It sort of feels a little rolled off and that it's just a very low stress listening experience, but then you'll just get this little sparkle, this little pop every once in a while that reminds you like, Oh no, these things can produce quite a bit of detail uh, in the upper regions. Mids are creamy. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit U-shaped, right? Like uh, vocals sometimes were a little bit set back, um, not coming as far forward as some other headphones. Um, uh, but, you know, they weren't lost. You weren't like searching for them with like just bass and treble, you know, 
crowding out the mids. They're, they're just just a little a little recessed, maybe. Um, sometimes I feel like the lower mids got a little bit bloomy, maybe. Um, yeah, bass bass is abundant. <laughs> it is rewarding. Um, I have been listening some some drier more bass light headphones lately so coming to these was just like ah oh, so welcome um you know some upright bass or um yeah just like anything that really digs in and has like a resonant bass quality it was just really really a treat on these um compared to so i, I happen to have the uh hyphen he 1000 v2s on hand and that's sort of it's the same typology open back planar in large format um similar price point um so just as a comparison point i think these two headphones are trying to do completely different things um so this might push you into one camp or the other maybe in your thinking but like the he 1000 is definitely lighter lighter weight certainly but just in terms of its presentation it's lighter it's airier it's brighter um it has less body um but a lot more focus like a lot more definition on things, a lot crisper. The rad is fuller, it's warmer, it's way more intimate, um, it's sweeter. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think they, they're nice foils for each other because they're really trying to do pretty different things with sort of the same format and price point of headphone. Um, and obviously these are one-off uniques and the HE 1000 V2 is, you know, a cookie cutter in its, its output. Um, not cookie cutter in its design, I'm just saying everyone's the same um so yeah i i think you know i did i did try these with a number of amps um and even a couple of dax uh and for me since they they are a little warmer and a little thicker pairing them with a, like a drier cleaner solid state amp actually was a really nice sort of compromise in terms of getting the best in terms they had to offer from detail um you know, and, and sort of not just doubling down on that, on that richness. That being said, I listened to some, on some, some tube gear as well, and they were, they were fun. They were nice. They were, it made me happy. So kind of depends what you're trying to get out of it. I know people are like, do cables really matter? Um, cables do matter. I think, I think though that they only matter when the rest of the gear and the chain can resolve enough that the cable matters. It's sort of like the last link to fix, but, um, Attaching these to some higher end gear, I I did notice that swapping out for I happen to have a, a silver cable that fits these, and it definitely like tightened and brightened it just a little bit, and I actually noticed that um, uh, so Rossin does a combo deal with a, a Rupert uh, Neve amp I think that's how you use Rupert Neve 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 uh, they do like a combo with the big big boy. Rupert Neve amp and they bundle it with uh, an OCC silver cable. So I'm, I'm not alone in my thinking that like there's, there's more Christmas and resolution to be had um, with the right cabling of this headphone. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I guess sort of wrap it up. It's like, I, this headphone scaled a lot more than I expected it to. And by that, I mean, when I first started listening to it, I, you know, sort of put it on some gear that seemed very like cost appropriate for it. It's like, this is great. I'm really enjoying it. It's really fun. It's maybe a, it's maybe crowding itself out a little bit. It's maybe a little thick. It's maybe like, there's not quite as much detail as I put it on better and better gear. It just scaled up. So I think this headphone is actually very performative. It's just that, um, it's not putting that in your face. It's not really trying to show off and, and, and say, check out all the details. I, you know, check out all the detail retrieval or like, check out how big I can sound stage. Like it's not, it's not doing that. It's just trying to give you this very lush analog presentation. And I think it's succeeding at that. Um, I, yeah, it's a really, it's a really fun headphone. I have a leave, leave, leave every listening session with a smile on my face and you know, what else can you ask for? All right. Well, we will leave it there. This is Seincraft, signing off. <laughs>